Hey guys, the world has gone bowl cozy crazy. It's your girl, Matt Cox here with MA Couture Crafting. And I wanna jump in on some of that bowl cozy goodness, I guess. So I grabbed a couple of different templates. I looked at a couple of different ways to make bowl cozies. And this one here is the Martelli pattern. So I think her name is Lisa Winner. Yeah, I think so. And she has these patterns for bowl cozies. And one of the good things about it is that they come in like every size imaginable. So you can get a bunch of different sizes. But in essence, it's really just a square with rounded corners. And you can technically round your corners with just about any round object you find. She also has some holes drilled in the top, which is nice because that provides consistency when you're sewing. Well, that's kind of on your sewing, but it provides some consistency with where the placement of your um, your darts are gonna be in your lines. And so there's something to that. However, they're kind of on the expensive side. I think I got a set of four and I think it cost me about 80 bucks. So I don't know. So there's some pros and some cons and then it's Martelli. So it's got that grippy stuff on the back. So you're able to actually turn the fabric without picking it up, which is kind of nice. It's, it's actually very nice. That's one of the things that their templates are really known for. And they make nice stuff, but I don't know if I'm being 100% honest, if I feel like you have to have this one. And it's definitely not my favorite method for making bowl cozies, but it's kind of cool that they come in a ton of different templates and it's got that clingy stuff on the back. But if you were just trying to make bowl cozies, I'll show you another way to make them without any templates coming up in my, I guess, bowl cozy series. All right, guys, if you haven't already done so, please like, comment, and subscribe, and keep watching to see how I make this little bow cozy and this guy right here, which is, I think it's going to be good for holding wonder clips. I really don't know, but I try just about anything, so we'll see. All right, guys, keep watching. Bye-bye. It is 100% imperative that if you're going to give these away or use these in the microwave, that you use 100% cotton batting, 100% cotton thread, and 100% cotton fabric, 100% across the board. No metallic in your fabric. So for these bowl cozies, um, really need to use 100% cotton batting, and that's what both of those are. Of course, I am getting packages all the time. And these are the Martelli Bowl Cozy templates. And I was told that you can use a twistable crayon to mark on batting. And I'm like, I just can't make that make sense. However, it does work, which is pretty cool. So I'm going through my fabric stash. What? I have a stash. I'm not happy about that, but we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that later. So I grabbed some stuff and I'm using this Dream Cotton um, by, I think it's by Quilters, Quilters Dream. Um, and it's 100% cotton without the scrim. That's important. Very, very important. It's soft. It's lovely. Um, but it's huge. This was a queen size. My only reason to have this is to be able to cut it up and use it when I need it. So I am just not being very, very careful with how I cut this and how much of it I cut. But I do want to make sure that I label that that, that is the 100%. I can't mix up the poly with the cotton, blah, blah, blah. So I put it back in the bag with the label. And again, I'm doing rough cuts. I'm not being careful. If I waste a little batting, I'm not tripping out about that. I bought this specifically to cut it up and do some um, some quilt projects with it. So that's what we're going to do. I'm using my Kai scissors to cut this batting. And I'm just doing a rough cut. I'm cutting, you need two for each cozy. So now I've got a rotating mat. I'm just cutting the batting because I'm trying to see how it feels to go around this template. Do I love this template? Do I not love this template? I'm just feeling it out. Because with Martelli plates, you can actually rotate when you're using fabric. I don't know about batting, but you can actually rotate it without lifting it up on a regular cutting mat. So you don't have to have a rotating cutting mat with the Martelli plates. It has that grippy stuff on the back. I'm using a fabric marker to mark on this right now because it was narrow enough to get in between those little holes. 
So you mark all the little holes with a marker. I don't suggest you use a Sharpie. Right here, I'm testing that crayon. See, it really does work on fabric. I'm like, what? I don't know why it does, but it does. So yeah, you use those all those holes. So you've got to put a mark in there. I do not suggest you use a Sharpie because it will bleed through your fabric and possibly stain your mat. Then you got to go get some alcohol and try to figure out if you can get it out, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just using a water, I think that's a water-soluble fabric marker that I, I don't like because it, it didn't go away with the water. I got angry about that. But anyway, it was great for this. So I'm cutting two layers. I cut a layer of batting. I cut a layer of fabric. And now I'm just going around this sucker, slowly but surely, trying to get used to it. And that's it. Trying to figure out if I love it. There are many ways to make these bowl cozies, and this is just one of them. So then you sew through the X. So you draw an X through the, the template. You just kind of connect the dots. And you sew through both sides. Nice and easy. And then you fold it in half. I like to fold it so that the arrow is pointing toward me. But remember, you have two of these. So I just did one, and now I'm showing you the other one. For whatever reason. I guess so that you believe that you have to do two. <laughs> so you do the two. And then you're going to fold this guy in half. Bam. There we go. And just sew on that little line. And these are going to create what they call darts. I like to go from the outside in, but um, you can also go from the inside out right there. Just like that. And then pull it out and fold it the, op the other way. Still with the big X pointing towards you. See how it makes a little triangle? And then sew your darts again. And that way you should have four darts that make up your cozy. Then you just trim off the excess so that you don't have a bunch of bulk inside your bowl. Trim off all four sides. Again, using my good Kai scissors here. They are sharp and they are not giving me any problems whatsoever. Then you're going to flip them right sides together. So pretty sides touching. And you will make sure the clip around the sides. You do not want to just sew this and hope that you get it together like no do a little clipping and a little pinning you need to be sure to leave a little hole for when you turn it inside out and you want to try to leave the hole on a straightaway the first stitch that you make which is going to be one side of the um the hole be sure to back stitch because you are going to be putting a lot of tension on those stitches so stitch forward stitch back and then stitch forward again on that section and try to nest your seams if possible. Um, we just cut out the bulk, but I try to nest them. I make the bottom seam um, come toward me and I push the, the one on top toward the machine. That way I can kind of make sure that they for sure are nested. And here you go. Some people call this birth and the baby, which is just a terrible way to say it. But I keep repeating it because it stayed with me. But turning it inside out. I'm clipping I'm not clipping the seam, but I'm clipping to the seam just to relieve some of the pressure since it is rounded. And that's just good practice with round things is to clip the seam to ease it a little bit. And then you just get to play with it, flip it and start pulling so that you get it all the way turned out. I have a purple thing. It's actually a blue thing, that little blue stick next to me. And I'm using that to push out the edges. Then I grab my iron and I give it a little press. And boy, does pressing make a difference. I tell you, these things really look nice and neat after you press them. So the hole where we turned it through, I'm just rolling it over a little bit. And I gave it a nice press. And then I gave it some Wonder Clips to hold it closed. Now I wanted to get super fancy and use some 12 weight cotton because I love using 12 weight cotton. It's just so thick. So you use 12 weight in the top and then in the bottom you use 50 weight thread and it just it's like coloring on top of your fabric. 
I just, I'm obsessed with it. And I'm also doing a decorative stitch right here. I would have done all the decorative stitches. However, it's so thick. And there are some places where you have to give it a little encouragement for my machine. My machine gets a little angry where the two seams nest. That's a lot of batting and fabric. It's like four layers and it's, it's a lot and it gets angry. So I have to give it a little encouragement. But I like the way that it came out. Decorative stitches are all the rage for me. I love to use my decorative stitches. See, this one was just a curved one. I like it. So this is one way of making a bowl cozy. This one does good with my really large mugs, like my really, really large ones that look like a bowl basically, but they're not, but they're really a mug. I'll show you. So then I just go around and clip the, um, you know, the threads and there we go. I'm going to try to do another one. I wanted to make one that was a little more fitted. So I use the same template. And I'm going around it. This time I'm cutting the batting and the fabric. You see how I turned it and I do not have a turning mat? Yeah, that's one of the things you can do with the Martelli. All of their templates allow you to do that with that special gripping on the back. And now I'm playing connect the dots just like I did before. Connect the dots. Push that little marker all the way through. You really need to have a marker with a fine point to get down in these holes because they're not huge. And then you go on ahead and sew it again. Sew through that X. Super quickly this time. And then after you're finished sewing through your X, I marked two inches and one inch. This was ridiculous. This made the most strange shape. And I'm keeping it in here just so that you see it. You know, maybe you have a use for the shape that this made, but this was a fail. This is... This is a weird, it stands up a little too tall. Um, I had to do some recalculating with it because it's just, but it can hold my wonder clips on the table because this fabric is just beautiful. I love it. But I changed the markings to two inches and one inch and it was just two inches, you know, on the long side and then one inch going up and down. And it just, it's funny that I was even able to turn it because it was so tight and such a, just a wonky shape. But nonetheless, I am going to let you guys see what it looks like anyway. So after you do one side, of course, you have to do the same thing to the other. And you just go on ahead and sew it the same exact way. And see, it looks kind of like a flower. Like I should put a flower and more petals on the inside or something. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video and we'll keep going. So this is what it looks like from the side with a very large cup. That's basically a bowl. And then here's the side view so you can see the depth. And then there's the pretty print. Thanks so much for watching, guys.